చెప్తాను హై స్టూడెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు ది ఇంట్రొడక్టరీ క్లాస్ ఆఫ్ మోలిక్యులర్ స్పెక్ట్రోస్కోపీ దిస్ ఇంట్రొడక్షన్ అండ్ ద క్లాస్ ఇస్ మెంట్ ఫోర్ అండర్ గ్రాడ్యుయేట్ గ్రాడ్యుయేట్ అండ్ పోస్ట్ గ్రాడ్యుయేట్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఓ వరల్డ్ వైడ్ వాట్ ఈస్ మోలిక్యులర్ స్పెక్ట్రోస్కోపీ everybody knows that it's a powerful analytical tool or method to study the structure of the molecule then molecular energy levels and even the stereo chemistry of the molecules and let us see what are the different types of molecular spectroscope first one is called the rotational spectrum rotational spectroscopy or rotational spectra this rotational spectra gives valuable information about the bond length bond length what is bond length bond length is the internuclear distance in atoms bond length then bond angle and the moment of inertia bond length bond angle and the moment of inertia are given without error exact evaluation is possible with a rotational spectra we cannot use a tape or a, a measuring scale to uh, measure the inner atomic distance this web powerful tool gives a chance for measurement of bond length bond angle and the moment of inertia now second type of spectra is called the vibrational spectra vibrational spectra using that uh, vibration spectroscopy we can have fundamental vibration frequency fundamental vibration frequency force constant and uh, we can predict whether it is a single bond double bond or triple bond the atom is having single bond means uh, carbon hydrogen single bond then double bond means uh, carbon oxygen double bond then carbon nitrogen triple bond etc we can predict whether the nature of bonding by using vibrational spectrum fundamental vibration frequency force constant what is force constant force constant is the restoring force per unit displacement you can see in the diagram that is ch single bond is having very less very less value for restoring force per unit displacement that is force constant is comparing with the double bond and triple bond is having maximum that value we cannot it is very difficult to stretch a triple bond than double bond and than single bond that is called a vibrational spectrum and along with that the diamond spectrum is there what's the main difference between diamond spectra and vibration spectra for vibration spectra to obtain it should have a permanent dipole moment even homogeneous molecule can be studied with the diamond spectra so we can say that the diamond spectra say gives the same value for a frequency force constant and it can also predict the single bond double bond and triple bond but what's the main difference diamond spectra and the vibration spectra which is called the infrared spectra are said to be complementary with each other complementary to each other that means regions which are active for diamond spectra will be inactive for vibration spectra and vice versa so the combined effort of vibration spectra that is uv spectra uh, infrared spectra and uh, diamond spectra makes the study of the all molecules in the universe that means why the 
infrared spectra is suitable for molecules having permanent dipole moment. Raman spectra is suitable for homogeneous molecules which is not having permanent dipole moment. Or Raman spectra is suitable for molecules due to symmetry which is not having a permanent dipole moment. So we can study entire spectrum of molecules that is the molecules having dipole moment and molecules without dipole moment. So that is why Raman spectra and IR spectra are said to be complementary to each other. Next comes the electronic spectrum. Electronic spectra, using that electronic spectra, we can study, determine the dissociation energy, dissociation energy of the molecule. Can be studied using rotational spectra, uh, the electronic spectrum. In electronic spectra, I have said that uh, in electronic spectra, dissociation energy, then electronic energy level of the molecule and stability of the molecule can be determined. Stability of the molecule can be determined. Now, apart from this, uh, more advanced uh, type of spectroscopy are there. It's called a NMR spectroscope. That is nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. That is by the interaction of the matter with electromagnetic radiation in presence of magnetic field. NMR spectra is possible. And NMR itself is divided to two. That is the conventional NMR. That is the interaction of uh, electromagnetic radiation along with the magnetic field. It's routine, it's similar to MRI scanning. And a uh, more advanced one is Fourier transform NMR. That is a mathematical method to establish the structure which is more uh, simple one. The Fourier transform spectrometer used because it is more sensitive and two-dimensional so that the entire molecule can be studied using the chemical shift and using a reference material. Now, in spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy will give more valuable information about the organic molecules. Organic molecules can be easily studied using this spectrum. And the later developed uh, technique is ESR, electron spin resonance spectra, which is very suitable for free radicals. Free radicals can be studied, free radicals. Free radicals along with uh, any molecule having paramagnetic uh, property or molecules having odd electrons or molecules which are in triplet state of the organic molecule can be studied using ESR spectra. We'll study in detail later. Okay, before uh, uh, going in detail, First of all, I will mention that the molecular spectroscopy will contain large number of problems. This type of problems are almost complicated also. So that what should be done? This problem can be solved by using computer installed with a mass application, namely the mass application using will be, so I'll repeat, the problems can be solved using a computer installed with the mass application, namely the 4-1, 4 I have written here. Here the spectroscopic transition is determined by a particular property called the selection rule. The selection rule is in fact derived from quantum mechanics and group theory. For beginning, 
I will mention what is a selection rule. Selection rules are rules governing the non-vanishing of uh, mu n m. Mu n m, where m is the initial state and n is the final state, a transition. So it is called a transition dipole moment. Mu n m is called a transition dipole moment. So what is a the selection rule? Selection rules are rules governing the non-vanishing of mu n m. Non-vanishing means not equal to zero. Non-vanishing of mu n m. That is transition dipole moment. We'll study in detail what is this uh, mu n m etc. in later classes. So what is spectroscopy? How can we define spectroscopy? We can define spectroscopy as a study of interaction of matter and electromagnetic radiation with the matter. So molecular spectrum is the result of interaction of molecule and electromagnetic radiation. So in the coming classes, we will develop the concept of molecular spectroscopy from known to unknown or from easy to difficult or from simple to complex by solving simple problems then and then. The method in few classes so that the meaningful understanding is possible to all type of students. We can have, we have seen that EMR, that is electromagnetic radiation interact with the matter and the molecule. I may I ask a question, what is EMR or electromagnetic radiation? I will help you. Electromagnetic radiation is defined as oscillating electric and magnetic field perpendicular to each other and perpendicular to the direction of uh, propagation. So it consists of uh, oscillating electric field and perpendicular to that, there is a magnetic field. They are mutually perpendicular and perpendicular to the direction of propagation. For convenience, we are dividing the electromagnetic radiation to different regions from very low energy to very high energy. I'm going to clean the board.